And the reason people are not attracted to the Lord Jesus is because we are failing in showing forth results in our lives. We're talking. We're speaking. But there's no proof to attract people to Him. Everybody will struggle in life because the Bible says you will have tribulation. But what separates people of God from the rest of the world is the results. Can you show forth His glory? Can you prove to the world that God answers prayer? Every religion teaches prayer. Every religion has a holy book. But what separates us from the rest is that the God that we worship is alive and he and the Bible says he hearkens to the prayers of his people so if God hears my prayers does God answer and if he does where is the proof and if there is no proof that means there's something lacking not on God's part but on my part it could be a lack of knowledge it could be a lack of understanding, or it could be a lack of dedication. It could be a lack of how to approach knowledge of how to approach God, or how to appropriate, appropriate the promises, or appropriate the word in my life. But let me tell you, ignorance is killing many Christians. Not knowing how to pray. Not knowing how to grow in God. How to produce the results in life. We, like anybody else, if you're diagnosed with a sickness, it seems like you're lost like everybody else. Yes, we have the Christian verbiage. We can talk Christian. We can talk healing, but we don't manifest healing. That's why people are not attracted. They don't want to know about your God. Everybody is talking about healing. New Age talks about healing, and they manifest healing. We are becoming big talkers and less doers. We're, we have learned to boast, but not to prove. So it's high time we come back to God with a genuine heart of repentance and say, Lord, you got to do something about me, about my life. I'm frustrated. I am disillusioned. I'm discouraged. Because I know what the Bible says. But I'm not able to experience it. You know what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11? It says, they obtained promises. Promises don't, don't drop in your lap like ripe cherries. You have to obtain them. You have to go after. You have to learn how to possess. Say amen. amen. See, one of the greatest disadvantages we have as Christians is that most people know about prayer, but they don't pray. And even if they do, it's for a short span of time. And in that short span of time, 95% of it is, bless me. Give me a job. Give me a visa. Bless my daughter. All personal needs. Where is the prayer that Jesus taught us? What we call the Lord's Prayer is not really the Lord's Prayer because I don't believe that was what Jesus prayed. You say, why? Because he says, forgive us. There was nothing to forgive in Jesus. He was sinless. But that was a model prayer that he taught us. Say amen. amen. In that, number one, in prayer, what did he teach us? Pray. To honor God first. To praise him. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. Number one, to honor God, to worship God, to praise God. Do we spend any amount of time in doing that in our daily prayer times? Number two. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There was nothing concerning his personal need. 
So the first priority and major amount of time that I need to spend in prayer is about the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom which includes salvation of souls and the manifestation of the glory of God in people's lives. I am not lying when I say I pray for you. I'm not lying when I say I pray for the people that watch us online. And I want to welcome all those from all over the world that are catching us this morning. You know, in the beginning they told you about the number of countries that people are watching us from. I want to pray God's blessing upon all of you. But the first things, th this is important. You have to have a, 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 you know, an outline, a, 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 an approach to prayer. Even if you neglect to pray about your own personal needs, don't neglect to pray about God's kingdom and His church. If you have only five minutes, pray more about the kingdom. Pray more about people's salvation. Pray more about others. Pray more about the church that you're planted in. Let me tell you what, what caused restoration and reversal in the life of Job is when he began to pray for others and not for himself. Can somebody say amen to that? We know the story, but we don't follow the example. The Bible says all those things that were written for our learning. Is that right? Why was the Old Testament given? Why is the New Testament given? Why, is, why are we still reading about what happened before Christ? Because all that was written for our benefit and our learning, that through them, it's not just to tell Sunday school stories to children, but it is to learn the patterns of God. God always works in patterns. And we need to understand the operations of the Holy Ghost. We need to understand how God works. How God deals with men. And what does He expect of us. And why something happened. Why God responded in a certain way. In a certain situation. This is the reason. Because hidden behind the stories are the mysteries. Hidden behind the stories are the mysteries. So unless I begin to catch, catch or, or, or capture the mysteries, I will not benefit from it. So when I say pray, when I say you need to pray at least an hour, let me tell you my friend, you cannot make a difference if you only pray for an hour. You cannot. You cannot make a difference. You need to pray more than an hour. Because let me tell you, prayer is not just a discipline, nor is it just a spiritual exercise. Prayer is the vehicle through which you access the realms of the Spirit. As much as man desires to go into space, and wants to discover the space and all the planets. The desire is only translated when they find a vehicle through which they can approach that. Is that right? Talk to me somebody. Desire in itself is not going to help. Desire becomes the starting point. Where it all begins. And it's good to have desires. But if I, want to, I desire God to do something in my life, I desire God to manifest His glory in me and through me, that's a great desire. But how do I access that realm? I need a vehicle. So as I'm praying, watch this, as I'm praying, I have to break through some barriers. Listen to me. When the spacecraft shoots up from earth, it is fighting against what is called gravity. Is that right? And after it breaks that atmosphere barrier and it goes beyond the power of gravity and it crosses that realm, what happens? Now it's free. That pull is no more. Let me tell you, the flesh is pulling you down. And in prayer, you have to break through the barrier of the flesh because the flesh does not like to pray. There is enmity between the flesh and the spirit. 
The desire is true. But the desire in itself is not going to help you. Desire is the number one step. And it's important for us to have the desire. But you also have to understand that if I have to get into that realm. And that desire has to manifest and become a reality. I have to pe press through some opposition. The gravity is pulling me down. The flesh is pulling me down. The desires of the world are pulling me down. The dreams that I have, that I planted for, per, that I planned for myself, are pulling me down. I have to break through all that to move into the realm of the Spirit. Once you get into the realm of the Spirit, now you begin to flow in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. Sometimes to break through that, it doesn't take much time, maybe five minutes. But sometimes it can take more than two hours. I'm teaching you spiritual stuff this morning. And I'm not doing it just to give you some information or tickle your ears. I'm doing it because I want to inspire you that God will generate a new hunger in your heart to pursue after God, that you will enter into the realms of the Spirit where you begin to experience things that men have not experienced that are in the natural world. Paul said, the wisdom I speak, people don't understand. This world will not understand. Why? Because he began to climb into those realms and hear the wisdom of God. There is no problem in the world that the wisdom of God cannot solve. There is no situation that God cannot handle. And there is enough power to destroy every work of the devil in anyone's life. We need access. We need access. It's not just power, it's wisdom as well. As powerful as Jesus was in casting out devils, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, when Peter came and said, Lord, we need to pay taxes, he didn't say, I command money to come. No. Wisdom. He said, go. Throw a line. Catch a fish. Open its mouth. You'll find a gold coin. That'll pay for you and me. There is no demonstration of power, but there's demonstration of wisdom. Amen. Sometimes it's wisdom. Sometimes it's power. But it's all from the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, church. It is impossible to live victorious without the help of the Holy Spirit when the enemy is so hardened in its heart to harm the church. If you're lukewarm, you cannot dream of winning in life. No. You have to become a man of God's word and prayer. Let me tell you something. Which is more important? Is prayer more important than the Bible? Or the Bible, reading and studying the Bible more important than prayer? Because there are certain people that emphasize a lot on prayer. And there are others that say, we don't need to pray much. All we need is the Word. And I was in that camp for a long time. I'm being honest in confessing that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say prayer was not important, but I thought prayer was not as important as the Word. Because I claimed I was a word, word man. And even now, I, I am a Word man. But I began to understand, and God began to bring a balance in my understanding about how both are important. If there is only power and no wisdom, you're heading for chaos. If there's only word and no power, because prayer generates power, you're only a talker with no, and, and, and not a producer. You need the word and you need to pray. Make time, my friend. Don't be negligent about these aspects of prayer and the Word. 
Bible is not a religious book. The words I speak are what? Say it, say it, say it. Life. You want life? You want to live long? You want to live healthy? You want to live in abundance? It's in that word. But let me tell you, you and I are blinded to it without the help of the Holy Spirit. But once I begin to open the word and God helps me to behold the wonders that are therein, then I begin to capture the scripture, capture the word that God wants me to have. As I begin to focus on that, the whatever I am in need of will manifest. People of God have been talking about giving thanks to God at all times. We said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Is that right? Yes. And you're listening to it. But my question is, have you started practicing it? Have you begun to apply that? Let me tell you something. It is like this. I told you last time, these are spiritual keys. Giving thanks is a spiritual key. Here is the problem. I wanted to actually demonstrate it. I forgot, so I didn't get it. Imagine a padlock, a big lock. Can you imagine that? All right. And Jesus said, Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Is that right? All right. So we, need, we know a lot of truths from the Bible. I was healed by stripes. My God shall supply all my needs. These are all keys. Giving thanks, these are keys. But here is a padlock. The padlock is what is stopping people from going in and possessing their inheritance, whatever that is. Healing, blessing, peace, joy, abundance, family relationships, marital issues, whatever it is. It's all in the kingdom available, but it's locked. To enter in and possess, what do you need? Keys. Is that correct? Okay. I have a bunch of keys. But I don't know which key to use. So I start using the different keys. And before long, I'm frustrated. Because the right key, I don't know which one it is. Many people in the body of Christ are in this predicament. They know they have... They have, they have been taught on different areas and, and have been given understanding of different keys, but they don't really know what key to use. And sometimes it's not just one key, it's a combination of keys. Is that true? Well, talk to me this morning. Is that true? Yes. So we need the combination. We need to understand. So who is going to help us? Yes. So how do I contact the Holy Spirit? Prayer and the Word. Jesus. See, it's not enough to say, Pastor already spoke for, on Thanksgiving for six weeks already. When is he going to change the topic? I won't until you learn. You see, somebody has to start applying it. And see the fruit of it. We're not in the church trying to give you more knowledge just for mental knowledge. We're trying to give you spiritual knowledge and keys in your hands that you can utilize in your circumstances when you're faced with an attack of the enemy. And utilize those keys and principles to overcome them and walk in victory. That's my dream. That's my prayer. That's my cry. I want you to succeed in life. I'm not here an entertainer, nor am I just a speaker. No, I'm not a speaker. Don't ever call me a speaker. I'm not a speaker. I'm a servant of God. Amen. With a message to help people be liberated from the bondage that they're held in. I want you to understand that. See, what we lack is true understanding and knowledge. We know the scriptures, but we don't have understanding. 
Jesus spoke in parables. The Bible says they sp he spoke in parables, but they could not understand. Because their understanding was sealed. Every week you come. You're a regular church attendant, but your understanding is sealed. That's why just attending church is not going to make any difference. You need to be a man of prayer where the Holy Ghost is helping you, opening the eyes of your understanding and giving you ears to hear the voice of God behind the words of the preacher. Because that's where you find the key to your success. Church, you got to get this. You got to get this. Every one of you is unique with a unique destiny in God. And only the Lord knows His destiny for you. He's planned it before you were formed in your mother's womb. Only He can help you discover your destiny. So as you walk on that path, you will begin to experience the supernatural help that God has provided for you. To overcome every opposition that's coming against you and walk in victory. Your sword dripping with blood. Slaying your giants. Slaying your enemy. And you're drunk with victory that comes from God. Jesus. you got to know what to do. It's not enough to just cry, cry, cry. There was this young man who bought a lot of chemicals in business. And the very next year, the market slumped. He was not able to sell anything. He was in desperate need. He went to the Lord. He cried. He prayed and said, Lord, help me, please. All I need, Lord, I don't want any profit. Let me recover my principal. And all the profit I will give to you, nothing happened. Nothing happened. This is why you need to listen to the word very carefully. And then he found a book. He went and bought the book written by Brother Hagen, in which he was talking about prayer. And as he was reading that, he came to the place where he read about the prayer of, uh, of agreement. He came to his wife and said, I found it. I found it. What did he find? A key. Everybody say a key. He said, I found it. He said, darling, come, let's pray. And they both prayed. In four days, everything was sold. It was not begging. It was not crying. It was not tears. The book of Hosea says, come to me with words. When you go to God, what moves God is not your tears. Stop crying. Stop crying. Learn there are keys that God has already given us. See, we need, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, so, sorry, is it 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3? All, let's read that. Let's read that. Please, could you project that for me? I'm going all over the place today, but I really believe the Holy Ghost is helping us do this. Okay, let's do this. 2 Peter, according as His divine power had given unto us, how many things? All, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Wait. All things. What does all things mean? All things mean whatever your life demands. For somebody, it's healing. For somebody, it's a job. For somebody, it's a prophet. All things that per all things mean whatever your life demands. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the what? So what is the barrier here? Why am I not succeeding? Why am I not having a breakthrough why am i why is the healing being delayed why am i not seeing progress why am i not seeing increase my people are destroyed the limiting factor here is knowledge but wait 
This knowledge is accessed not just by intellectual study. It is accessed through the study with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because there are intellectual people that have spent years in reading the Bible and have concluded that it's like any other religion. There are people that have studied the Bible and have read and have done a lot of research and have, found and have eventually concluded that Jesus could not have been born of a virgin. That's no knowledge that we're talking about. No. The knowledge that I'm talking about is the knowledge that comes from the, ho ho from the Holy Spirit God. As I open the Word open my eyes. This is the very reason why Paul prayed and said, Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. He said, if only you could understand what I'm saying, I could heal you. This is what Jesus said. But your understanding is sealed. You're hearing. See, there are thousands of people that heard Jesus preach. But only those that came to him were blessed and healed and delivered. But there were many onlookers. They did not come for help. They came to criticize. They came to find fault. They came to see how they can trap him in his words so that they can incarcerate him. And they can find ways in which, by which they can put him to death. Different people came with different ideas and different longings. Those that came to find, uh, or find a way as to how they can kill him Although they could not find anything, they eventually made it happen. But those that came with a desire to be healed, were healed. Those that came desiring to be set free from demonic oppression, found it in Him. Hallelujah. See, you have to treasure the Word of God. I wish we can come back to the days that when we lie down to sleep, that as we lie down, it's not the phone that rests on our <laughs> bosom, but it's the Bible. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. There were days when we never had this, that we would have a dim light, but we would be reading the Bible lying on the bed, and we went to sleep, and the Bible was on our chest. Today, it's the phone. That is why we don't see victory. People of God, something has to change. Something has to change. Give me Proverbs chapter 4, please, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to what? My words. That means what? Pay attention. You know, give me a book, please. Give me that book, any book. I can use, I mean, I can go into the library. I can take a book and I can be doing this. And somebody comes by and says, what are you doing? I say, I'm browsing. I'm not pay paying attention. I'm browsing. I'm just, just looking through things. And many of us read our Bible like that. We browse through it. We don't pay attention. Pay attention. That means focus. Don't multitask, especially when you're with the Lord. Why do wives get upset with their husbands when they're talking, they're watching television? Because they're multitasking and they're not giving, paying attention to what they're saying. Am I right? See, all men are laughing because they know what they go through at home. No, when you go to God, don't multitask. Focus. I've come to fellowship with God. I've come to hear His voice. And the voice is a still, small voice. You can't find it in the earthquake. You can't find it in the fire. You can't find it in the wind. It's a still, small voice. You have to get your surroundings quiet.
calm down. Pay attention to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. That means pay close attention and listen carefully. Why? If you miss his voice, you missed your key. So when we teach about giving thanks and telling you that the book of Psalms 100 says, enter, in, go, enter into his courts with thanksgiving, we're saying, listen, that ushers you into the presence of God. The courts of God speak about the presence of God. Amen? So as I walk into his presence, I, I, I have to pay close attention. I cannot be diverted. Recently, we had to meet somebody in another country. And uh, when we went there, there was this lady who came to take us in, usher us in. The number one thing she said, sir, you're not allowed to take your phones in. So we had to give our phones to them. Nobody could enter into that place with their phones. There are several reasons for that. That's why I don't multitask. You have to pay attention to what the Lord has to say. Amen. That's why before you read the Bible, pray in the Holy Ghost first. Because your mind is going in a thousand different directions. Bring it back to focus. So your heart is calmed down. And now you're in a position to catch what the Lord has to say to you. So the whole point of praying and spending time in his presence is not to mark something on a register saying I spent so much time I spent so many days no it is to fellowship with God and the more I grow in this fellowship and intimacy the more secrets he will reveal to me because he begins to trust me that I'm not coming in there just to take advantage of him and run away with the gifts I, I should long for his presence. I should long for his fellowship. So the key, I want God's attention. I want God to speak to me. I want God to minister to me. I want God to answer my cry. Come on. The first thing is enter his gates. Let, your, let the Holy Spirit usher you into his presence as you begin to praise him. That doesn't mean you sing two fast songs and three slow songs. It could be any number of songs. Is that true? It could be. I mean, it doesn't have to be one song or ten songs. It could be just half a song that will end, cause you to enter in. Look, today we never, pre we never planned that this would happen this morning in the service. But just, just the Spirit of God taking over that one song stirred something in us. That helped many of us to enter into the presence of God and experience something amazing. So I come into his presence with thanksgiving. I ush, he's, we are ushered in. When I come into the presence and I sense, you know, let me tell you, we don't go by feelings. We walk by faith. That does not mean you won't have feelings. We walk, see, the entrance is by faith. But once we get in there by faith, now something is stirred. You can sense. Because there are spiritual senses. I said, I was sensing like droplets were dropping. Did I see it? Did I feel it on my skin? No, I sensed it. And we can enter into such experiences that help us to become stronger in our faith and draw closer to God to experience Him in deeper levels. Amen? Hallelujah. So, let me finish this. Uh, go back to go back to that place, please. Proverbs, yeah. Uh, um, thine, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse twenty-one. Uh, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. What's he talking about? He's talking about focus. Focus. 
And then what happens? 22. They are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Listen, let me tell you, I'm going to use something here. I'm going to say something. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. We must be intoxicated with the Word of God. Don't be drunk with wine, but be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Be drunk with the Word. You must be so filled with the Word that you walk with such confidence that it makes people around you wonder what is happening in your life. There was a young guy who got so drunk on the Word and uh, you know, if you want to go to a university and meet a vice chancellor, it's not easy, right? You can't just walk into a vice chancellor's office. But he was so full of God in him that he went boldly. And somehow God opened the door for him to walk into the presence of the vice chancellor. He said, um, he said, sir, my father sent me to you. He said, who's your father? He said, Jesus. And the guy looked at him and said, okay, you're admitted, he said. <laughs> I don't know what went through the mind of the vice chancellor, but look at the, he was drunk with the word. It's not confidence. I'm not talking about self-confidence. I'm talking about confidence that rises within you because of the revelation of the word that has become real to you. I know. The place where you say, I know. And you will sound foolish to all the people around you and even call you by names. And sometimes when we walk like that, it will appear like arrogance to the people around you. But don't fear. It's not arrogance. It's confidence. So I'm saying, we have to pay attention to the Word, and we have to pray. 